I like using the mono over the super braids. That, that mono just allow, allows a little more stretch in the There he goes. Where the mono allows a little stretch in the line when they're not biting real aggressive and uh, where the, they're super braids, there is no stretch. So when the fish hits, goes to suck it in, he'll uh, miss it a lot of times. Where the mono, when he goes to suck it in, if he's not really, uh, you know, if they're real aggressive and they just inhale it, it doesn't matter. But when they're uh, a little less active, as they seem to be today, uh, that mono allows a stretch and allows them to suck the lure in a little, you know, and get hooked up. All right, <clears throat> now we've, you know, put the crawler on. We got our six, seven foot leader there. Uh, when you go to reset the dipsy, you just clip it back in there like that. So what happens when you do get a fish on? He pulls on it, it trop, pops loose, and you reel it up. Otherwise, when you engage it. What this is doing is forcing the dipsy to go down. It's a diving, diving like it's pulling against like this. When the fish pops it, now you're pulling it straight up towards the rod. Okay. Yeah, and when you let them out, you don't want to let them out fast. You want to let them out slow. Uh, slow that down because if you let it out too fast it'll go down and spin up and then you'll have a big uh, knotted up mess when you go to bring it in. And a lot of times as I'm letting them down slowly you'll catch a lot of fish while you're letting them out. Picking colors for uh, crankbaits, uh, you know, uh, some days it, they're real color uh, oriented. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is start out with four different colors and kind of let the fish choose which one they want that day. But on a over cloud, overcast, cloudy day, I would probably go with darker colors like purples, uh, you know, in that, that color. Uh, on a clear day, I would go with uh, more just chromes and pearls, uh, more uh, shinier lures. And not to say that they won't work on both, but that's what I would start out with. And especially in the clear water like we have here, you know, we can see uh, pretty close to 15 feet down, you know, and uh, <clears throat> you, you go with more of the natural looking colors, uh, the pearls and the chromes and them types. Now, and I'm not, you know, and not to say that uh, the bright oranges or fire tigers and uh, chartreuses won't work, but that's what I would start out with. You know, just as a rule of thumb, on the in the clear days, more of the chromes, uh, and on a cloudy day, the little darker, darker colored lures. You know, on a dark, on a darky, uh, cloudy day, like the the purples, uh, you know, like we're using today, this color is a blue and pink and chrome. Uh, maybe on a sunny day, more like the watermelon, uh, iridescent. Uh, cheap sunglasses is a good one. That can bite, kind of be a, that's a kind of a light, dark, that can be a uh, all around good color right there. Some of the tackle we're using today um, for the reel on the Dipsies, I'm using a 6500 Ultra Cast uh, from Abu Garcia, spooled with uh, 614 Fireline. And backing that up, I also, I, you know, you need to put some, I got some mono backing. First, you want to fill the spool about, because this line does not take much room up on the spool. So what you do is you uh, back it up with some old mono first, maybe 10 or 14 or 20 pound test mono. Put it on the reel first fill it up maybe half, three quarters full, and then uh, put the fire line on 
uh, you know, after that. So uh, you're, it gives you more leverage when you're cranking the fish in. It fills the spool up. For the rod, we're using an eight and a half foot uh, Berkeley Select. Uh, is what I use for my dipsies. It's a uh, medium. I think it's their uh, two-piece uh, fiber or uh, graphite rod. Uh, on the mono, I'm using a 5600 Ultracast uh, Abu Garcia reel, spooled with 10-pound test. 10-pound uh, test XT. Uh, that stuff is some pretty tough stuff. I've reeled in a lot of fish. Uh, I tie a lot of uh, some of my smaller spinner harnesses with 10-pound test. But out here on Lake Erie, uh, what I use for tying up uh, my spinner harnesses, and I tie most of my own, is 20-pound uh, XT. Or I will uh, go to uh, some 30-pound fire line. Uh, that, I've also uh, liked that pretty well, too. That's pretty tough stuff for uh, spinner harnesses. Use a 7.5-foot uh, trolling rod from uh, Ab uh, Berkeley. It's a little guy. Yeah, did you see how that was just right in the corner of his mouth, which that was a pretty good hook set, but a lot of times if they're just on the back troubles like that, they're just telling you that uh, the fish are not real active. And now uh, if that lure was down his throat, then uh, we know the fish are pretty active. Well, folks, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching today, tuning in to Northeast Outdoors. My name is Mark Broomball. And uh, uh, if you try some of these techniques and tactics that I showed you and uh, some of the tips, I'm sure it'll help you catch a lot more fish. And uh, thanks again. And back to you, Jim. Thanks, Mark. Great job, by the way. Hey, folks, the techniques that Mark uses for catching deep water suspended walleye on Lake Erie can also be used for other species like smallmouth bass and steelhead. Give them a try. And one of the nicest parts about it is that you can fish them out of a small boat. You don't need big masts or downriggers or anything like that to catch great fish like that. Hey, folks, you know what? It doesn't matter if you're deep water trolling for walleye in Lake Erie or deer hunting in Pennsylvania. You're surrounded by creation, and that creation was made just for you. While you're out enjoying all that creation, take a moment to look up and give thanks. I'm Jim Hanley. See you next time.